Crypto Trader is proudly brought to you by Element, a full-service investment bank for the digital token capital markets. South Korea, home to just 50 million people, this country boasts one of the top economies in the world. In the crypto world, this hub in the heart of Asia accounts for 20% of the total crypto volume traded. South Koreans have always been early adopters of technology and they see the blockchain as their version of the American dream, as the gateway of the young generation to future fortunes. Western media coverage of crypto from Korea is scarce. And given the language barrier, it's often inaccurate. We decided that if we're gonna be the world's crypto show, we've gotta bring you crypto from the heart of Korea. For the next 60 minutes, we're gonna give you exclusive access to the traders, the whales, the hedge funds, the meetups, the nightlife, and of course, the hottest new projects coming out of Korea. So stay tuned. Andrew, you've picked us up from the Seoul International Airport. You're our guide for the week. You're gonna be taking us around Korea. Looking what can we expect? There's a lot. I mean, there's a lot of activity in the Korean market currently. Um, a lot of great ICOs, for example, uh, Icon, uh, Sentinel Protocol, there's old Kimchi Premium. In terms of just global Bitcoin trading volume, it's 40%. Are the people phased by regulation here? People were initially phased by regulation when back in 2017, in September, uh, the government had banned ICOs. But over the last few months, we've seen things completely change. Currently, legislation is being drafted so that ISO is going to become legalized. And so you'll probably see that in the next few months. And I think it's going to be a huge uh, catalyst for the next bull run going forward. Sandra, I'm very excited to be here. What can I expect from the next two days? Uh, there's a lot of ICOs you can see. We've got great investors and traders you can also meet. Great, I can't wait. Awesome. The Korean blockchain scene is humming with activity. There are projects happening everywhere. But there seems to be one hub where all the big projects are coming out of. That hub is called Hashed, and I decided to take a closer look at what they're doing. Let's go. Gentlemen, we've been in Korea for a few days. We've been in the crypto scene, and all roads seem to lead back to Hashed. The, the name on everyone's mouth is, is Hashed. Who is Hashed? What do you guys do? Hashed is the largest crypto fund based in South Korean market. So we are focusing on three things. Uh, investment, accelerating, and community building. Uh, for investment, we have so far successfully invested in more than 40 projects uh, from the globe, including EOS, Carbon Network, Omisego, and Ontology, and many others. Now you, now you talk about being the biggest fund in South Korea. How big is the fund? Uh, our a AUM is uh, about 250 million USD these days. 250 million dollars. And when, yeah. did you, when did you start the fund? Mm -hmm. When did you found uh, uh, About one year and a half ago. So you started a fund a year and a half ago, yeah. which yeah. is today valued at $250 million. Correct. Yeah. When you started the fund, how much money was in the fund? Uh, it's about 600k USD at that time. Yes, and was yeah. it something that came out of Hashed? Uh, we accelerated uh, ICON project, so we worked together, so we uh, get them uh, funds from uh, the globe, and uh, we uh, uh, introduce them to the influencers uh, in the world. In your fund today, what are the top projects in terms of holding? Uh, these days, uh, Ontology and EOS are the two uh, biggest ones. Your investment thesis for 2018, or the projects that you're looking for in 2018, what kind of projects are you looking at? High-performance blockchain protocol and also a very infra-level project. And also uh, the other type is uh, the reverse ratio from the uh, big companies. So protocol levels, high performance, high performance blockchain levels, and reverse ICOs. Yeah. Now, for our viewers that don't know what a reverse ICO is, a reverse ICO is when there's an existing company which actually creates an ICO, and the term is a reverse ICO. Correct. Let's talk about high performance blockchains. So we know that EOS promises to be a high performance blockchain. Mm -hmm. We know that Cardano promises to be a yep. high performance blockchain. Are there any other ones that you've invested in or that you are investing in that you believe are high-performance blockchains, early-stage high-performance blockchains? 
음, ontology, mm -hmm. elf, uh, quark chain, quark chain, yeah, yes. and, al and also icon, and, uh, and also icon, icon yeah. yeah, which was one of our, one of our <laughs> acceleration projects. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Not any specific projects that you're looking at today in 2018 and going, these are going to be the winners in 2018. Yeah, sure. So uh, Sentinel protocol. Sentinel protocol. Yeah. What about Sentinel protocol excites you? You know, uh, blockchain is uh, blockchain is all, all, all about the safety and security. But uh, you know, uh, the outside of the blockchain is not very safe. So Sentinel protocol uh, will help this problem. Yeah, I've, we've spoken about Sentinel protocol before, and it does seem like it forms an integral layer around the blockchain, right. which makes the blockchain safer for the man in the street to use. Blockchain cannot be mainstream and unless more tools like Sentinel Protocol are built to make it Absolutely. more user-friendly. Right. Yeah. Now I'm going to look at you. Your favorite project for 2018? Uh, it is uh, the project. There is a project called uh, Oasis. It's a high-performance uh, blockchain uh, project uh, from uh, the professor from UC Berkeley. If you were to summarize the crypto scene in Korea, is there anything to be worried about from a government point of view? Uh, so actually, uh, we have been advising uh, our government as well, and I believe uh, our government is moving forward to supporting crypto space. So the government is becoming more yeah, pro. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So gentlemen, Hashed has got a reputation for incubating and accelerating a whole host of blockchain projects. I think the most famous one is the Icon project, which was accelerated yes. right here at Hashed. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about the Accelerator program. Uh, so we are uh, helping now like eight projects uh, and what we do is we basically uh, helping them to like how to write white paper to get funds and how to build community. So like we do everything from A to Z so that they can uh, build their products and services and blockchain successfully. So the Accelerator program, the Hashed Accelerator program is very famous in Korea. People talk about it as being the best Accelerator program out here. What's the secret sauce in the Hashed Accelerator that makes it so successful? Uh, so actually, most of us have an uh, engineering background, so we can understand uh, very well about their uh, base technology, and also we can help the project a lot. So I'm going to go and take a look at all the companies in the Accelerator. Uh, gentlemen, thank you very much for your time. It's been a great insight to get to know the inner workings of Hashed and the secret sauce that has made you guys the biggest and most successful fund in Asia. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hey! Hi, nice to meet you. How are you doing? I'm nice great. to meet you. Tell me a bit about your project. Sure, uh, our project is called the Carry Protocol and it deals with some really interesting valuable data which is offline transaction data. So when you talk about offline transaction data, that sounds like the holy grail. It sounds like all the retail data that people want that doesn't happen online. That's true. Once we log off of Amazon or Google, like everyone wants to know where we go, what we buy and uh, how much we buy. How do you talk to me about the type of merchants that you have and the type of data that you've got? Sure. I mean, we're drinking coffee right now. Coffee is one of the biggest categories for us. Um, but we also deal with uh, FNB. And we also uh, have a lot of retail shops as well. For example, Nike is one of our customers in Thanks. Korea. And right now, we do loyalty for about 10,000 real merchants and 15 million users in Korea. And we generate a lot of this data, this holy grail data that you just mentioned. We're all about giving the data back to the consumer who makes that data. And then if you choose to open this data, it goes onto our common blockchain where advertisers can target people, like people who just ate lunch. So I'm starting to yeah. get it. If I own my own data, I can then sell my own data to an advertiser in return for some kind of token. Yes, so our token is a reward token. And every time you contribute your data to the network, and, the, and this network becomes more and more attractive and powerful for advertisers, um, you share in that upside. You continue to grow like a... Uh, so I own my own offline data, I can sell my own offline data mm -hmm. in return for tokens and the more the community grows, the more the value of the token. That's correct. That's amazing, thank you yeah, so thank much. You. Nice to have you on the show. What are you working on? So we're working on Terra, which is a price stable cryptocurrency. A stable coin? Correct. Do we need another stable coin? We've reviewed all the stable coins that have come out and we told ourselves that, hey, uh, there's one bucket that's vulnerable to speculation and another bucket that's vulnerable to regulation. And we wanted a decentralized coin that's uh, free from both of those. What do you mean? So if you look at 
a stable coin like Tether, it's backed by real world assets. So there's one dollar that's backing every Tether that's issued. Uh, but that's quite a centralized way to solve this problem. Uh, because you don't know where the Tether are and where it gets audited, etc. Correct. It's not on the blockchain. It's not transparent. The bank could get seized. Uh, there's custodian risk because there's a team that's managing hundreds of billions of dollars potentially down the road. And uh, we feel like there had to be a more decentralized solution to this. Okay. What about the speculation side of it? Our theory is that the stability reserve needs to back completely the size of the economy that's in circulation. If I look at the relationship between Terra and Luna, it's almost like you've replaced Visa with Luna and dollars with Terra, right? That's absolutely correct, yes. So the Terra becomes the dollar. Every time a transaction happens, a transaction fee goes to Visa. Yes. But in this case, Visa becomes the community coin. Right. And so the more spend that happens in Terra, the more the value of Luna. It's like consumers who spend in this ecosystem actually own a piece of Visa. That's right. Very, very correct. Absolutely correct. That's absolutely genius. <laughs> <laughs> so we're actually offering something called stability as a service. So not only do you have to use Terra, but we're going to offer stability to utility projects that are uh, in the ecosystem. So we feel like you know a lot of utility projects like Steam, Filecoin, they can all benefit from a stability in the ecosystem. And uh, it's very tough for them to create the stability internally. And so if we can back them with our stability funds, and if they can pay a small transaction fee, we think it's going to be a win-win for everyone involved. I think I just got it. So you can apply this to any type of token. Correct. If any yes. time a token is transacted, a percentage of the transaction fee goes into a Luna, yes. then you can create a stable coin out of any token. Correct. Yes, and all, all the coins that are in the ecosystem are helping each other in the stability. That's going to be the smartest concept I've heard of in 2018. Wow. 2018 just got started. You should be, <laughs> you should be really proud of what you guys are doing. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Hey, how you doing? How you doing, John? Tell us a bit about your project. Okay, well, it's called Contents Protocol. It's a personalized recommendation engine for contents. Uh, and basically we gather user data preference and we recommend movies and TV series and comics and books that our users are most likely to consume. Uh, yeah, it's the uh, recommendation engine accuracy is 26% higher than Netflix. So let me try and understand this. So right. what you're doing is you've got this engine, right. which is powered by artificial intelligence, which recommends content to users. Exactly. And what you're saying is that your engine is much more accurate than any other engine because more people are watching more content due to your recommendation engine. Exactly. Um, that's, and that's exactly what Next Step two years ago, we applied, we took the engine and we applied it to a platform, a subscription VOD service called WatchUp. Play, which is now the uh, leading competitor to Netflix in Korea. How many subscribers subscribers has Watch Your Play got? Uh, we got over 200,000 subscribers right now. Over 70% of the contents that our users actually consume actually come from the contents that we recommend. And only 21% comes from the direct search. One number says it all actually, 18 hours plus, which is the hour amount, amount of time that a user spends watching contents on our platform every month. And how does the blockchain solve this problem? Because I, I'm assuming that what you're going right. to do is you're going to say that the token is used to incentivize the content manufacturer directly. Basically what we're trying to do, for, the main thing that the blockchain allows us to do is to minimize that platform fee, which used to range anywhere from 30 to 70 percent, back down to 10 percent and redistribute that to the content providers and also compensate a new participant. Well, they've been a participant, but they've never been rewarded or compensated before, the users. Who really provide free marketing for the contents. So you're incentivized to tell people about the content. That's exactly the point. Yeah. And the more people that view the same content that you view, right. the more rebates you get for incentivizing the view. Exactly, they should be rewarded for leaving a rating, a review, and also sharing it on their social media. So Thank I wish you, so you all the best on this journey. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. You're actually in the midst of your ICO as we speak. That's right. So tell us about the protocol. Okay, so we are working on something called TTC protocol. Uh, it's an easy to integrate protocol that enables communities to incentivize their users and grow together as a one union. Let's talk practically. Right, so basically the idea came from 
why is that all the social network today or the communities in the, on the digital and online media side is earning all the profits while all the content is being created by users and all the time is being spent by users to create that value. So what we are trying to build here is that just by uh, contributing to the community, by maybe content creation or doing a simply clicking like to the, the contents or leaving a comments or reporting the bad contents. Being part of the ecosystem. Exactly. And by providing the value to the uh, community that the, the, the part of the value that created by your time, your user's time, should go back to the user. So that's incentivize the user. But not to be critical, but if we look at a, a system like Steam or Steemit, oh, right. isn't that exactly what they're doing, giving the money back to the community? That is a very good question. What we know as a, a people who's experienced in the mobile um, application world is that it's really, really difficult to grow a community. So what we're trying to do is that we're building um, this protocol so that existing communities can easily jump into blockchain technology, uh, blockchain um, community without without hassle of doing their own token economy, token integration. So if I get it, there's right. a protocol level for right. all social communities to plug into. So existing social communities and new social communities. Right. Any type of community, actually. Well, it's actually an aggregator of all communities. A simple idea. Incentivize your, your users, uh, grow your community, right? And then connect all the community to have a bigger union of all the communities to grow together. That's amazing. Thank you. Great. Thank you, thank you so much. Hawan, you run a, a very exciting existing business, which you're now going into ICO. We call that the reverse ICO process. Sure. Existing business does an mm -hmm. ICO. Let's talk about your existing business first. What is your existing business? Uh, sure. Um, it's uh, called Hui So. Uh, it's mainly selling Korean beauty to China. Uh, we started this business back in 2014. And what we are doing at this stage is we have around 1,800 sales reps in China. Um, they are Chinese people, and they sell uh, Korean beauty products to Chinese customers. Customers. So you've got a business with sales reps. The business mm -hmm. sells cosmetics to China mm -hmm. from Korea. Mm -hmm. You do this very successfully because you have good data and use the data to mine the product. Correct. What do you need the blockchain for? Uh, yeah, um, while doing this uh, process sales business, um, we thought that, I mean, I mean, data can be used uh, not only in the sales place. Uh, we can use this data when we make products. Also, we can use this data for advertisement platform. Also, we can also make much more efficient uh, marketplace if we use these uh, data. So that's why uh, we came up with this blockchain idea, uh, and this is how we, uh, this is how the Cosmo Chain project started. So Cosmo Chain is actually a chain mm -hmm. where the user can upload a whole lot of their data regarding cosmetics onto the chain and that data will be then bought by the brands correct and by the advertisers sure and they use this information as they use this information they reward the user with some kind of token which is correct your, your token yes so now you're in the middle of your token sale at the moment yes. how much money are you raising uh yeah i mean fifty thousand hard either hard cap that we are targeting for and thirty five thousand from institutional investors and fifteen thousand from our publics we only have around five to seven thousand left at this stage mm -hmm. thank you very much and good luck with your project thanks so much that's all we have time for from Stay tuned for more stuff from Korea after the break. Crypto Trader is proudly brought to you by Element, a full service investment bank for the digital token capital markets. No trip to Korea would be complete without meeting the darling child of Korea. And by that, of course, I mean the Icon token. Icon must be the most prominent token to have come out of Korea. And with me, I have Hun, who's one of the co-founders of Icon. Hun, thank you very much. Thank you for coming on to Crypto Trader. I know it's a holiday here in Korea today, but you've agreed to join us. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for visiting us. So Hun, when you started Icon, why did you start Icon? What were you thinking? Yeah, we started the Icon project in 2017, uh, early 2017. Uh, we make our blockchain engine and we do uh, a lot of businesses in the enterprise area like uh, uh, financial, institu financial institutions and universities and hospitals and the insurance companies. So. Uh, we start uh, the, this project independently, but uh, our clients want to link to another blockchain companies or another blockchain consortium to 
better to make better their own businesses, their own business blockchain communities. So you have your clients yeah. and your clients yeah. are all built on different blockchains. And, yeah, right. and what they were asking you was, how can we link or how can we yeah, right. join the blockchains together? Yeah, right. And is that what started off Icon? Yeah, right. So what is Icon? On one side, we focus on the uh, blockchain platform for the decentralized application. And the other side is the, we want to interlink, uh, interoperab interoperability uh, in the blockchain to blockchain. Now, when you talk about interoperability, that sounds very similar to something that one chain is doing or yeah. Aeon is doing it. Is it the same type of principle? Actually, one chain and Aeon and us uh, make a B uh, alliance, Blockchain Interoperability Alliance, the BIA. Uh, we are talking. Uh, we are talking about the, uh, how to make a, a de facto standard in the blockchain interoperability. Interoperability alliance. Uh, so the interoperability alliance, yeah. as I currently understand it, is yourselves, yeah. I uh, Icon, Aeon, yeah. and OneChain, and yeah, you've right. formed the interoperability alliance. Yes, right. And you've done this to create a standard or a set standard for interoperability. Yeah, right. Why is interoperability so important? Every community or every ecosystem is the uh, start it start their own blockchain communities or so you've got existing yeah. blockchains every every yeah, yeah. every project is building it on its own blockchain, own blockchain yeah. and developing its own communities yeah own communities yeah right. so why do you want to connect them uh, in the end they want to interlink to other com blockchain communities or other services or other companies to uh, make better their own blockchain communities or their own companies. So the inter-blockchain technology is really, really uh, key. It's the bridge, between, yeah, bridge the between the blockchain communities. Now let's talk about Icon, the fundamentals of Icon. Yeah. Is Icon a fast blockchain? Can Icon transact at high speeds? Uh, for now, we, uh, we support uh, about uh, over 1,000 uh, transactions per second uh, for our own uh, blockchain platform. Are there any exciting projects that you can talk about that are being built on the Icon platform today? Yeah, Blue Whale is the uh, exciting project on, the, on top of the Icon. Blue Whale is the focus on the gig economy uh, through the blockchain technology. Okay, so Blue Whale is actually the first ICO that's happening off the Icon platform. Yes, right. I think we should go and take a look at the Blue Whale ICO. So we're here with the founder of Blue Whale, Will Lee, and he's launched the first ICO on the Icon network. Now, what does Blue Whale actually do? So basically what we do is we are making a decentralized ecosystem for freelancers and contractors and self-employed. Uh, in order to uh, solve the three main problems in the gig and share economy uh, industry. So basically there are three main problems. One is high commissions, and second one is excessive advertising costs. The last one is there is no implement benefit for freelancers and contractors. So you're talking about three real problems that freelancers and contractors have. You're talking about agencies that sit in the middle mm -hmm. and take very high commissions. Mm -hmm. You're talking about a very high advertising cost. Mm -hmm. And you're talking about the fact that if you are a freelancer, you have got no benefits. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. How does Blue Whale solve this? So basically what we do is, uh, you know, basically we can decrease our commission uh, down to almost zero because we can use uh, through the blockchain technology. So what we can do is we can build a Blue Whale network can uh, work with many different uh, shared economy, gig economy platforms. So basically, we can uh, decentralize their platform as well. And then somehow we can uh, somehow share the user base by providing free advertising solutions. So we decrease the commission from you know, basically 30% to almost 0%. So no more commission. No, no commission. No yeah. more advertising. Yeah, no advertising. Talk to me, how about the benefits, employ employment benefits? How do you achieve employment benefits using a token economy? We think that we can provide uh, employment benefits uh, such as pensions and also uh, PTO, the like paid time off. Like it's simply like if you uh, you know uh, get the uh, tokens later, then we can give you know uh, maybe premium like one or two years later. And also, uh, if they want to use it right away, they can use it as you know a PTO, paid time off. When does your token sell close? Uh, we will close. We will you know we actually close our uh, private and also pre sales. We already successfully, successfully raised. Uh, 21 million dollars so far and then we are going to start a public sale uh, 23rd of May 
but uh, because we already have you know a lot of you know uh, potential uh, contributors, so we think that we can close uh, you know quick you know maybe right after we open. Look, it sounds very interesting. We know it's the first. ICO on the Icon Network. Mm -hmm. We wish you the best of luck and we're going to keep watching how you do. I've just had the most amazing experience. I've walked into a co-working, co-living space where people come to learn about the blockchain. Guys, how does this model actually work? So we started a YouTube channel and uh, started like teaching people about like matters regarding blockchain and big what Bitcoin is. And then people kind of like started want to, um, wanting to live with us and study blockchain full time. So me and Sian, the co-founder of this whole place, just called Nance. Uh, we kind of decided to rent out a whole apartment building, uh, apartment, and then invite people who, who have, invite, invite whoever is interested in blockchain and want to study it. How would you define the state of blockchain in Korea? Is it mainstream? Is it thriving? Tell me about what it's like when you're out on the streets. Um, in terms of speculation and people buying and selling, it is, I will definitely see as mainstream. So there's recent statistics that say that uh, people who are in the working class, uh, working between like ages of 20 and 30, 20 and 30, 20 to 40, like about more than 60% of people are trading. When I'm at, when I'm in a coffee shop uh, out here in the center of Seoul, um, I can always hear someone who's like 40, 50, 60 year old who's next to me, who are next to me, and they're always talking about the price of cryptocurrency, either going up or down. And adding to that, the friends of my mom and my mom ask kind of me to like what coins to buy and stuff. So everybody's trading cryptocurrency here. Basically, yes. What's the state of development of blockchain projects? Um, I think a lot of the startups and big companies here are preparing a reverse ICO. Reverse ICO is really, um, it's really hot right now in Korea. And you define reverse ICO as a company that has an existing business yeah. that is going to do an ICO. Yeah, basically. 그렇게 되고 그다음에 어 제가 이제 미스터 블록체인 맨 처음에서 좀 취지가 뭐였냐면은. Are you guys as Koreans proud of the Icon project? Do you think it's a world-class project? The Icon, Terra, Metadium, there's a whole, there's a slew of projects, right? That people are well familiar with, or they will be familiar with in a couple of months. Mm -hmm. Well, so we know that Bitcoin has the whole anar anarcho crypto an anarcho community along with the libertarian community and then the very hard cryptographers that who form the base of the community. We know Ethereum has like the younger developers, they, uh, like what Yongu was saying, like the web, web developers or different programmers who come from that era and area and they form a very strong base but unfortunately um, projects from Korea yet have um, yet they haven't yet made a dent in um, attracting developers who might be outside of Korea so I think even in terms of communication that's not necessarily their strong suit so you have very strong views about Korean projects let's talk about other projects outside of Korea which projects are you bullish on um, I think we're very bullish on Ethereum because um, because of what she just said because it has like strong community and just like a lot of the Bitcoin kind of like um, derivatives are enjoying like mm -hmm. Bitcoin private, Bitcoin, Bitcoin anonymous, Bitcoin private, right. Bitcoin gold, Bitcoin diamond. Yeah, so I think more it's like we're seeing um, it's about it's more about community than technology yeah. per se. And I also want to say, like, buy some tokens of the project that is very good at community building. Yeah. One of the good examples is Loom Network. Yeah. Yeah. Technology, just, just to make this clear, technology, being good at technology, that's a necessary condition. But community is what makes a pop. So technology is an entry ticket. Oh, yeah, of course. That's, that's the entry that. ticket to the game. Mm -hmm. But being able to build a community is what makes a token successful. Yeah, and we could... And we could list off so many examples of this. You have Lisk with, they're trying to bootstrap the JavaScript, JavaScript community, right? So look at how these people are all bootstrapping communities onto their existing technology. I'm gonna put you on the spot here and ask you guys for one or two more tokens each that you guys are bullish on and the reason. Mm. I really do like something called the Republic Protocol. Republic Protocol is doing the um, sort of like a make a decentralized dark pool where 
uh, people can just like do the block deal without knowing actually the underlying transaction. But I think it's just like much needed solution right now. So a public protocol, yes. I'm looking at you. You know, if there's a token that's not gonna go down anytime soon, it's probably all the exchange tokens. <laughs> this is a cheap way out, but like Binance is not gonna go down anytime soon. KU coin, Binance. Yeah, but but you have to also look at the, the size of the exchange itself. The general market sentiment in Korea today. What's it like? So Korea doesn't really have an American dream. People don't really dream too much. So there's a lot of people who want to get rich and who don't really see a future in any other uh, asset and ask traditional assets. So what they're doing is they're pumping their money into cryptocurrency in order that they might have a chance at getting a better future and becoming rich. The Korean dream is the cryptocurrency dream. So that's the, that's the Korean equivalent of the American dream. Right now, that's exactly how it seems like. <laughs> If you want to get an idea of the investment sentiment in the region, the best way to do it is to speak to the guys that are investing, the fund managers. And so in that vein, I've got one of the fund managers who manages a fund in Singapore and Korea to give us an idea of what he's looking at. Zhang, thank you for joining us. Pleasure to So good to see you. You've been operating a fund. How long have you been operating a fund for? We started XSQ in Singapore about two years ago. We started off as miners. And how big is your fund today? Uh, today we are running not, we are not too big, uh, we have made about $10 million. And looking at this region, investing in this region, what are you seeing coming out of Korea? So in Korea, it's interesting, Korea has one of Asia's highest percentage of commercial, commercializations of technology. And that's why X Square is supported by the local government here. Um, we do see still a lot of blockchain infrastructure projects. We see a lot of people like Phantom, we see a lot of people like Quarkchain, we see a few of these, you know, faster and better blockchain that are coming up. And that's coming out of Korea. What about Singapore? Is Singapore a hub? Is, is there activity in Singapore? Singapore is definitely activity for blockchain uh, and for cryptocurrencies because our, our government has been pretty transparent, has been pretty open to welcome the talents of the world. Um, in Singapore, we are looking at 108 token. It is an index token that tracks the fifth, top 15 cryptocurrencies for people who want simplicity in basically getting an exposure in what we call crypto assets today. Let's talk about some of the projects that you're looking at at the moment, which you find exciting. So there's one project that comes out of Singapore. They just got a license for a crypto to fiat exchange. Um, it's called Sparrow Exchange, as in Sparrow the Bird. Cool, so Sparrow sounds like a, a great one. What are, your, what are your other ones that you're looking at today? So the other one that, you know, that's part of our strategy for market mechanism investing uh, is 108 token. 108 token is a crypto index fund that basically tracks the top 15 cryptocurrencies. So we've got Sparrow, we've got 108. Any other projects that you're looking at? Just projects that you're seeing in the region. So the, the, the project we're seeing in terms of infrastructure protocol, of course, blockchain, they're basically blockchain infrastructure that's basically better, faster, you know, they could be taking over Ethereum hopefully in the next one and a half years. Well, Quarkchain is offering, they're talking about 100,000 transactions per second or 10,000 transactions per second on a test net. They're offering, they're talking about being secure, decentralized and very fast. Yeah. <laughs> what other projects? There is a, it's actually a project called Oasis. Um, it's really it's incubated by the folks from UC Berkeley. Um, again, you know, it's blockchain infrastructure. They can do smart contracts. They can do exactly everything that Ethereum can do, only better. So maybe the blockchain's adoption will take I don't know one and a half years or eighteen months in that sense. Blockchain adoption is has been the fastest adoption in history and definitely will be the fastest uh, adoption in history. Absolutely. The Korean government are they friendly to cryptocurrency? What's the official stance? We have heard of, of, of news like that that the next administration is going to be very pro blockchain, pro crypto in that sense. So. We are, we are waiting for the potential to manifest itself. It's been an absolute pleasure speaking to you. Thank you, Ray. I look forward to catching up with you again soon. Thank you very much. If we listen to the advice that we've been getting from all the fund managers and the serious investors, what they're talking about is talking about investing in the protocol layer of the blockchain or the base layer of the blockchain. But there's several protocol layers and these protocol layers power the applications that will then work on top of them. So for example, if you think of Civic, Civic is an identity 
app or an app that verifies identity. It needs a protocol layer which is specific to identity. And in that case, we've met a company in Korea called Metalium. And Metalium are a protocol for the identity layer. Explain to us how it works, Richard. Okay, Metalium uh, is a uh, blockchain was regarded as uh, trustless. However, due to regulation, we need uh, we need trust on blockchain. The Power by Blockchain, Metadium is an identity protocol, a layer of the internet uh, pro uh, providing trustless, uh, trustless uh, trust in this world. Okay, meeting up with that. So it's trustless trust. Now, that's quite a, a, a good term because if you think about it, the blockchain means that everyone is anonymous, but we need to trust each other. How do you achieve trustless trust? Okay, uh, like so, uh, society uh, offline online world uh, need to uh, have uh, many uh, the identity solution. For a uh, user can uh, use Metadium easily, uh, they don't have to care about the two-factor two authentication solution. And uh, user can reduce their effort to manage the uh, private key. Uh, user don't need to over provide the information anymore. So you just have the right to manage their own private information. If I understand correctly, what you're saying is that Metalium is actually the store of a user's identity. So in other words, if I'm drinking at a, at a bar, for example, mm -hmm. I need to prove to them that I'm over 21 years old. I don't need to tell them anything else about my name or my address. Mm -hmm. And so what you're saying is that Metalium is the layer which stores a user's identity, but then only gives the request of information just the, the right amount of information that they need to maintain security. Yes, that's correct. So through Metadium, uh, you can sell only the necessary information you need to provide. Which is verified, of course, by yes. the blockchain. Yes. Now, you guys did a token sell recently. Tell us about your token sell. I heard that it sold out very quickly. Uh, within two days, uh, the coming 35 million coming finished. Richard, if I understand correctly, Metadium is the protocol level for the identification verification. And the actual banks or users won't plug directly into Metadium, but we can expect a lot of dApps or a lot of identity verification apps to be built on top of your platform. Is that right? Yes. Yeah, yeah we provide uh, the protocol and API and SDK yeah, to make the dApp on uh, our platform. Great. And when is the token generation event? We are uh, targeting a uh, testnet will be open in the uh, third quarter of uh, this year, year 2018. And beta service, uh, we're targeting to provide uh, end of this year. That's www.metalium.com. I've got a feeling that when this one hits exchanges, it's going to go to the moon. Asia is all about culture and a big part of the culture is around food so we stopped to get a little bit of a bite but this time it's not Korean food we've actually opted for Japanese food. Speaking of culture let's talk about the trading culture here in Korea. It seems like a Korean culture is about trading it's they like the ups and they like the downs and everywhere we go sitting at restaurants people are talking about Bitcoin and Ethereum. <laughs> oh, yeah definitely. Yeah. Um, so more color around that when you think about just how Koreans make money just after going to the best universities in Korea, they strive to work for you know, the best companies here, obviously. And those will be like the LG Electronics, they'll be like the Samsungs. Uh, but when you look at the, the pay they offer for a year when you first graduate college, it's as low as $25,000. And even if you work there for a few years, it's still going to be the same. So really, when you think about how to make money beyond just like working these full-time jobs, working 12 hours a day, there really isn't as much. Before, it was about traditional equity, investing into stocks and bonds. And so people are flocking to Bitcoin now because the returns are tremendous, obviously, right? And so... Is crypto a young thing or are the older people getting into crypto too? It seems to me yeah. that, that everyone's in crypto. Oh, yeah. That's one of the amazing things about crypto. Um, when you go to the conferences, and I've been to many here in Korea, massive conferences, you see people as young as high school students to people as old as senior citizens. And for the younger people, probably about 20, 25% are invested in crypto, uh, or at least know something about it. Whereas like, people that are 50, 60 years old, I'd say about 10, 11% um, are invested in and know, know about crypto. So do you think that Korea has the biggest trading, cri cryptocurrency trading penetration percentage in the world? Yes, I definitely think so. 
And the number of exchanges, does, does Korea have enough exchanges to, to, to handle all of this? Uh, without question. I think we need to go and take a closer look at some of the exchanges here in Korea. Yeah, you got it. I'll definitely take you guys on, on a tour. We'll see one of those exchanges. Great, let's go. Awesome. Perfect. Crypto exchanges are a big business and no trip to Korea would be complete without a visit to a crypto exchange. We tried to get hold of the exchanges and one of the exchanges agreed to see us and that was Corbett, which is the oldest exchange in Korea. Michelle, some insight as to the trading market in Korea. How big is the trading market in Korea? So in terms of trading market, so last month I lost around 80 billion dollars, which is so the total trading volume world was 500 billion so so korea is a very important market for, for cryptocurrency trading then i guess so yes. yes when you look at your traders your average trader are they trading multiple times a day or a week mm -hmm. or are they the type of traders that buy and hold i guess it's half and half but like many of the traders who trade a lot they trade really often so often like several times a day or like some, yeah, sometimes like 10 times a day. Some 10 mm -hmm. trades a day? Yes. And in terms of regulation in, in mm -hmm. Korea, we hear mm -hmm. reports in the Western world of ICO bans. Mm -hmm. We hear that the government blows hot and blows cold. One day crypto is good, one day crypto is bad. How do you find working with the regulators in Korea? It's really hard to regulate, I think. And like, there is a blockchain association which is working with the government and regulators so that they can make a like right laws in June. There's another, another election coming. But all indications say mm -hmm. that the change of government will look favorably on cryptocurrency. And if we look in the streets, people are talking about cryptocurrency. Yes. There's a big uptake. Do you think that the that after June we're going to be more positive towards cryptocurrency? That's what like every people are hoping. Like every cryptocurrency people are hoping. But we're not sure actually because like government is can always like be more conservative about like money thing mm -hmm. so we're not sure so bank are being careful i think do you think that a government that is against cryptocurrency take is taking a big chance that they may lose the election is cryptocurrency mm -hmm. that powerful in korea i guess so because like some of the young people think it's only hope for them down to like earn a lot of money like so they're like young people's voting is really important, right? So government is, I think, being a little bit careful about young people's election. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So we've seen sold by day and the crypto scene is humming. Everyone's talking about crypto. People are buying crypto. People are getting involved in ICOs. But it doesn't end in the day. And now we're going to go and see sold by night. What is this place? This is a venue for exclusive events. Awesome. And what are we going to do here tonight? Tonight, it's called Foam Astrodote. And basically, it's a highly exclusive and highly curated event for people within crypto. Let's go. Definitely. Let's do it. So welcome. Yeah, let's do it. Let's go. All they serve is, uh, you know, Johnny Walker Blue Label and all that. Cheers. Thank, Thank you for coming. You me. Yeah, awesome. You got it. Cheers, sure, guys. So we've got here basically great ICOs, a lot of great investors, exchanges, the media. And over here we have uh, one of the co-founders of Phantom. So that takes me to Phantom. Hmm. We get a lot of requests on our show to feature ICOs. And Phantom is one of the names that keeps coming up. What is Phantom? What are you guys planning to achieve? Uh, Phantom is the next generation of blockchain technology. What brings you to Korea? I'm here in Korea for FOMO Masternode. Really excited to be here, the inaugural event for FOMO. What are your impressions of the crypto scene in Korea? It's so fast-paced and so vibrant. What are the chances of bumping into a Korean Jew in Korea? It's a dream come true, being that I've never been to my homeland, um, 
And this is all possible because of Bitcoin and crypto. And what are your favorite alts? My favorite alts would be Icon. And now they're starting to have some really, really hype ICOs coming out. Those like Byzant uh, is crazy hype right now. I'm trying to find a way to get into it. Uh, Blue Whale, Sentinel Protocol. You've doubled your money on one chain. Oh yes, I absolutely did. Every time we have you on our, on our show and, and, you, and you talk about projects, they fly. What's the next icon? Ah, that's hard to say. I mean, like people say the next icon is Phantom. Uh, the architecture that we're using, which is DAG, there's no blocks involved, so it's really not a blockchain. When you talk about DAG, what's a, D a DAG or DAG? Yeah, a DAG stands for Directed Acyclic Graph. And basically what it is, you know, when we have a blockchain, the reason it's called a blockchain is everybody knows it's because you're having blocks and you're linking them horizontally one at a time. Well, in a DAG architecture, there is no blocks. You're not going horizontal. You're actually going asynchronous. So your entire network is all moving in one direction. So that means the inherent bottleneck and scalability issues that we have in blockchain does not exist in a DAG architecture. Because the scalability problems we're having with blockchain is full blocks, yes. which are linear in nature. That's right. What is this blockchain promise? We are aiming for 300,000 transactions per second. 300,000 transactions per second. That's right. How are you confident that you're going to achieve this? A lot of this is based on the mathematics behind it. Right? How do you attain 300,000 transactions per second? So based on our algorithm that we're developing right now um, and our researchers, uh, the math that we've calculated based on a full network, about 100 nodes in operation, uh, we came out with a number of 300,000 per second based on 100 nodes, and uh, 100 kilobytes per nodes, per node, uh, or per transaction block. And based on that, we can kind of calculate exactly how much we can do. How much money are you raising? Our hard cap for our ICO is 39.8 million. Yeah. Have you started raising? Uh, we have. Um, somehow people have found out about Phantom and we've grown organically. Uh, we have completed our seed round and we're currently in our private, private pre round. Trading is happening in Korea. And another thing that's happening is that there are a lot of great projects which are coming out of Korea. If you want to hear more, that's phantom.foundation. So one of the big issues with leaving your tokens on an exchange is that if the exchange gets hacked, your tokens are gone. But that's about to change because I found an exchange that actually insures your tokens while they're in the wallet on the exchange. Basically what happens is whenever you have a transaction fee, few basis points, there is a, a, there's a few basis points which is equivalent to the insurance premium. Launching to the public from 1st of July. So if you're interested in buying tokens in an exchange which is insured, you can go to cgcx.io. So what are your impressions of Korea? Are you feeling this crypto energy here? Yeah, good. There's a, like a couple of places in the world that I've been where you immediately get the sense that the nation knows what it's about. Maybe give us a little bit of background as to who you guys are and what you do. Yeah, cool. So our token sends, uh, like you said, it's doing pretty well. We're on a kind of marathon, not a sprint here. We're trying to change the world and uh, our purpose is to create an app store of decentralized applications that can help each other grow. And how many apps are actually live today? Yeah, so we've got in the ecosystem now around 30, 30 dApps that are working inside of it. And the underlying blockchain is actually written in Python, so most of the developers in the world can pick that up pretty quickly and start working on it. We hope by then this year to have around 100 dApps working inside of the ecosystem. If I were to ask you to categorize or tell me about the crypto scene in Korea, mm -hmm. how, would you, how would you categorize it? Korea is crazy about crypto. We're on the way to the airport after a whirlwind tour of crypto Korea. I'm sure you'll agree after seeing what we've seen in the last couple of days that the Asian crypto scene cannot be ignored and that in the West we don't get good coverage as to the extent of the magnitude of the scene. Being a truly global crypto show, we're going to set up an office to bring you coverage from the East. Stories from Korea, Japan, Singapore and the entire region. But for now, we've got to catch a plane back to the West to New York City for Crypto Week. We'll be bringing you live coverage all week long. Until then, trade well, my friends. Crypto Trader is proudly brought to you by Element, a full-service investment bank for the digital token capital markets.